was the summer of 2014, and for my son's bar mitzvah present, just like many Jewish parents, we wanted him to bond with the Holy Land. Oh, it worked perhaps too well. My husband had stayed back at the hotel, and our friends, my son and I, had just stopped in a pharmacy. Run! Run to the bomb shelter, sweetie! Please! Please hurry! I didn't hear the sirens at first, but the Israelis did. They're used to hearing these things. We ran to the back of the storeroom. It was a 12 foot by 24 foot windowless bomb shelter. My heart's pounding. Boom! Boom! I hear it and feel the percussion of the exploding bombs. I'm trying not to get sick. I look at my 13-year-old son and I think I'll never forgive myself if something happens to him. That's an excerpt from a speech I gave to the Orange County Jewish Bar Association. It was the first but not the last time we had to run to a bomb shelter. Our adventure and my transformation is also the subject of my book, Blasted from Complacency, A Journey from Terror to Transformation in Israel. There is no chapter in a parenting book on what to do when a war starts and you're on a family vacation. Think touring extraordinary and sacred sites mixed with cowering in bomb shelters. I'm still trying to get over the Jewish guilt of taking my son to war for his bar mitzvah present. The impact of being human targets helped me understand the plight of Israelis living like this, and it also made me want to work on peace. How Israel is often described on the news is not what I'd seen with my own eyes. And I felt Palestinian parents also preferred their children playing safely in their backyards. The missiles exploded just near enough to blow apart my world as I knew it, forever changing me. And you'd never recognize my life today with what it was like then. I believe I found my life's purpose. Hello, I'm Penny St, and I'm the host of Peace with Penny. Today we'll be speaking with Netta Levy, who is the Director of Policy Advocacy at Itach Maki, Women Lawyers for Social Justice. It is an Israeli advocacy organization working to advance the rights of disenfranchised women and elevate the voices of diverse women in public discourse. Itach Maki both mean with you in Hebrew and Arabic respectively. And their organization is built on a structure of Jewish Arab partnership. Via legal aid, litigation, policy change, leadership training, public advocacy, and community organizing, Itach Maki advances the rights of women from marginalized groups in Israel. They support Arab women, Jewish ultra Orthodox women, single mothers, low income working women, women in poverty, immigrants, and more. Their multicultural group of women lawyers and activists work towards building a shared society based on the common values of gender equality and equal access to justice. Netta is an attorney and has worked with Itach Maki since 2012. She is leading the project to advance the implementation in Israel of UNSC Resolution 1325 in Israel and the UN Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. Prior to joining Itach Maki, Netta was a documentary filmmaker and a journalist and worked as a news correspondent and anchor woman for Channel 10 as an editor at the Daily Yediot Achar. <laughs> She'll have to help me with this. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> Newspaper and as an editor and correspondent for several radio stations in Israel. Welcome, Netta. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Penny. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Um, yeah, the Hebrew language is uh, for us a little bit <laughs> challenging at times. Um, your organization does so much, and as a woman, I especially thank you for it. Um, can you give us an overview of Itach Maki? Yes, of course, sure. So thank you again, uh, Penny. As, and as you said, Itach Maaki is, Itach is in Hebrew and Maaki mm -hmm. is in Arabic with you in a feminine tense. Uh, and the organization was established in 2001 uh, by a group of feminist uh, lawyers, feminist uh, 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 lawyers who, who were uh, promoting feminist uh, um, 
values and achievements also during the 90s, but uh, in the beginning uh, of the millennium, they decided to, uh, to establish uh, an organization that will focus on marginalized women, on the rights of marginalized women. Uh, and we started uh, um, with a hotline, hotline for women uh, mm -hmm. that uh, live in poverty, women workers, uh, that uh, their uh, uh, rights have been abused, and women that live on social uh, uh, social um, um, stipend stipends mm -hmm. uh, from the from the state. And during the years, the the organization developed. Um, uh, and we have now three offices. One is in the center in Tel Aviv, one is in Haifa, and one is in Beersheba. Uh, and we are, as you said, we, we work together, uh, Arab, uh, Palestinian uh, women, citizens of Israel, mm -hmm. and uh, Jewish women. I'm a Jewish uh, woman. Most mm -hmm. of us are advocates, but not all of us. And we do law in a very... Um, flexible manner of the of the uh, of the of the word law meaning that we also represent women in uh, in court uh, without without any payment pro bono uh, and we also work a lot in the Knesset in the Israeli parliament and we also work with um, community change working with women uh, with grassroots uh, women mm -hmm. to uh, create new norms to change uh, uh, norms that offend women and even if it's not in the law but it's 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 part of how uh, some of the communities uh, uh, um, treat women mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to to create changes and to promote women's rights Awesome. I know, of course, by serving women, you do serve men, but are your clients all women? Yes, our clients are women. We have, we have as, as I uh, mentioned, we have a hotline, and the mm -hmm. hotline is, is designated to women mm -hmm. from low income uh, status and, and jobs, uh, and women who live in poverty. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, simultaneous to that, we have other projects uh, that are more aimed at um, at um, policy change. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is called City for All, and City for All mm -hmm. is uh, in in Hebrew it's called Ir Lechulan. Ir is city, but Lechulan mm -hmm. is for all in feminine mm -hmm. tense. Mm -hmm. In it's only in Hebrew you can understand that. And right. this is a project where we try to assimilate and to implement gender perspective into strategy uh, programs and, and uh, work of municipalities throughout Israel. We're working uh, in mixed cities and in, in uh, different cities around Israel. Haifa is one of the biggest cities that adopted and that uh, worked with us, uh, with us on that. Uh, and as you said, I am leading, I'm, I'm uh, part of two of our projects. One, huge uh, projects. Is, we, <laughs> yes, one of them, I think we will uh, discuss quite a lot yeah, uh, during yeah. our talk is, is advancing UN Security Council resolution mm -hmm. uh, 1325. This is the number. Right. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we'll, we'll elaborate yeah. about that. Uh, yes, yeah, briefly. we're going to talk about yes. both yes. well a number of and that we you know you have so many projects we can't get to all of them but uh, definitely the two that you are I mean just understanding them <laughs> we could do a whole thing on one of them but uh, I want to get to you know a cross section yeah. but uh, wonderful wonderful projects so go ahead sorry I think that the two projects have something in common two of mm -hmm. them are our, uh, our attempt as feminist activists, Israeli feminist activists, to take very uh, progressive and important international law or international decisions and to localize it to Israel, to yeah. the Israeli reality. 
Uh, yes. One is 1325, which will we which we will elaborate because this mm -hmm. uh, the, the 1325 is Women, Peace, and Security. This is the title Amen. of this Women's Security Council resolution. And the other uh, project is advancing the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. It's 17 goals that the UN, mm -hmm. uh, all state members, uh, decided on. 17 goals that all state members have to achieve until the year 2030. One of them is peace, uh, goal number 16. And another is, uh, is gender equality, number five. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the importance uh, of, uh, and the, the unique thing about the, the sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. also called agenda 2030 sometimes, right. is that they, that they focus on the holistic approach and how to see how each goal is, com they, they are combined. When you work on gender equality and promoting gender equality, you have to also refer to peace and you also have to refer to education and to equality and to, uh, uh, and to um, uh, minimize uh, gaps in society and to environmental and ecological uh, goals. So this is uh, the, um, in brief, uh, the agenda of the SDGs. This is the name of it, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and we in Israel, Itach Ma'aki, we decided to to take this to take the call of uh, of, of of this uh, UN uh, um, uh, decision, uh, and we created a um, coalition with mm -hmm. uh, environmental sustainability uh, organization, also very leading organization in Israel, Heschel Center, and also with a civic leadership and other organization and together we called on other civil society organizations to join us on this journey uh, to to um, to call on the Israeli government to pursue the uh, the goals and to understand how it's relevant for Israel and how it's important for Israel when your organization is described as being built, on a structure of Jewish Arab partnership, can you explain what that means and how you go about your work? Yes. Okay. So um, we have now, I think, thirteen uh, workers uh, in Israel. We are considered to be a medium-sized uh, civil society organization, mm -hmm. uh, and it's about it's almost half half uh, uh, Jewish and Palestinian Israel Palestinian citizens of Israel. Uh, workers um, fabulous and also in the board it's half it's 50 50 percent the board and we also have um, the chair uh, that we have two chairs for the board mm. one is a uh, palestinian citizen of israel hazara el hadi uh, she's a lawyer uh, uh, from taibe and the other is debbie gild chayu she's also a lawyer who also works in the uh, in uh, ACRI, the Association for uh, Civil uh, Rights in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, so our the agenda of uh, of all of our projects is to work um, together. To work together. Sometimes uh, it's not that easy. Uh, <laughs> no, no doubt. Uh, I've general, I've noted that you have to. Uh, I think peace work has a lot with you know learning how to keep our mouth shut and listen rather than mm -hmm. that you know it's really hard when you have to listen to somebody who may be saying things that are so not how you believe but it's essential if you want to work on peace you need to know how people are feeling and so you can try to bridge the gap of where you do agree and how you can you know make it better even so that you may have other disagreements mm -hmm. i can tell you that for um, the the project that i've been leading for many years now uh, 1325 uh, women peace and security is is very political it touches mm. the, the most political issues the, the issues of the conflict of the israeli palestinian conflict mm -hmm. uh, and for many years i was leading the project i also I always had a 
steering committee uh, that advised me and the, uh, in the steering committee there were Palestinian citizens of Israel and Jewish mm -hmm. but now just recently uh, I we had uh, an opportunity to add another team member a very important team member for me who's a Palestinian citizen of Israel uh, Dr. Nida Shiguri mm -hmm. uh, and she's uh, and and uh, she's uh, now leading this project together with me and this is crucial um, for a project that deals with women, peace and security, because mm -hmm. you cannot, um, you, you, when I was uh, trying to promote um, many of the issues, I realized that even if I'm trying to imagine what my Palestinian uh, citizens of Israel uh, colleagues think, I will usually miss most of the most of the picture uh, there yeah. are many i would it's not complicated. say it's complicated it's complicated yeah. you know yeah you, usually we say blind spots but mm -hmm. a few months ago i realized that it's much more than blind spots it's it's mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, it's such a blindness uh, that it has to be uh, led together mm -hmm. uh, in, and, and so many times um, I, can, I can go on with, uh, you know, with some um, uh, activity and not to realize that uh, for my Palestinian colleagues, it's, it's very difficult for her. To, mm -hmm. to see me go on with it uh, to, to, to uh, and, and she might feel that I'm uh, um, that I, I don't want to say the word betray because it sounds a little bit more too dramatic but maybe sometimes well, even well that... they do they they I mean I I have often seen a preconceived notion on uh, you know both sides of what the other thinks and so on. And until you walk in a person's shoes, you you have to hear from them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I hear exactly yeah. what you're saying. And because we cannot uh, uh, really get to the one another's shoes, mm -hmm. uh, I think the best way to deal with it is to, to work together mm -hmm. and to do it in a dialogue, in a continuous dialogue uh, which sometimes is not easy, but is very, very important. I can give you an example. Uh, sure. We have um, lately, um, we, we decided to create a coalition, a, a working group of, of uh, Israeli women's organizations that mm -hmm. all work to advance the principles of 1325, which is women's I, I didn't explain too much about that but in a minute I will <clears throat> but um, we decided to to work together and to create a, 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 and we we initiated several meetings uh, in which we met uh, over something like 30 organizations uh, Jewish and Palestinian citizens of Israel women's organization uh, and usually this these uh, organizations work uh, together uh, in a great manner on issues of uh, welfare, of fighting poverty, of uh, gender violence, and, and uh, violence against women and children. Uh, but when it comes to these, the essence of 1325, the peace and the conflict, uh, this is when usually you have many, many obstacles. And recently, just uh, a few weeks ago, we decided to write a letter together to the mm. prime minister uh, asking him to, uh, to minimize the distribution of weapons in the public sphere and in the civil, uh, uh, in the civil um, uh, sphere. Uh, and we said together, women, Jewish women, Palestinian women, women in, inside uh, the Jewish community, uh, ultra Orthodox women. It was a very, it was forty-five organizations from a, from very different uh, perspectives and uh, and backgrounds. And we all said to him, asking people to go 
carry your weapons to the streets will only jeopardize us. This is not, this will not give us more security. On the contrary, it's, it's a danger. Uh, and the numbers speak for, speak for themselves. Yeah. Um, Israeli society is uh, like any society, but in terms of complexity in a very small area mm -hmm. is extremely complex. And I, I, I uh, over the last few weeks, um, I've been looking at it uh, more closely and uh, because I was studying your organization for one and another one, uh, but um, you have uh, in the US, you know, we still have a gender gap. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, in the recent Academy Awards, I, it was unfortunately very funny that the three, um, the one of the opening jokes by three comedians, uh, three female comedians who, uh, you know, started the show was that uh, the reason there were three of them was because uh, they could afford that for the price of one male. And while it's funny, you know, as someone who, you know, grew up in corporate life and was one of the few uh, female managers and consultants and so I'm just, are we still talking about this? <laughs> but it's unfortunate how that we are still talking about it. There still is this gap. Society works very slowly. But in Israel specifically, it it's because of the uh, there's some very uh, uh, percentage wise, you have segments of the population that culturally, religiously have a huge influence on the society in, in terms of, for instance, the ultra orthodox or the orthodox mm -hmm. with beliefs that um, being more conservative or reform uh, and a feminist, <laughs> I, you know, you know, both of my chins dropped, <laughs> you know, <laughs> listening to this. Uh, but I'd like to, to talk a little bit about the unique cultural issues that are found that you work on in the ultra orthodox uh, and, 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 and some of the other communities because they're unique. And I think most people in the United States or outside of Israel or outside of that world, even many mm -hmm. Jews like me aren't familiar with the disparity and, and, and how mm -hmm. women are treated versus men and, and what they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. So just if you could add some of that before we get into your other stuff, uh, you know, important information because it, it's, I, you know, listening to some of the stuff, I felt like I was on another planet. <laughs> Even mm. though I'm Jewish, I'm going, what? <laughs> you mm. know, but anyway, can you talk about the, how the ultra orthodox yeah. impacts and, and politically how that mm -hmm. all yeah. plays out? I think that the the most uh, the, the answer to your question is uh, most vivid in the political uh, area, and this is where we we've been also involved. And specifically, uh, uh, we represented in a petition that was submitted to the uh, High Court of Justice in Israel a few years ago against one of the ultra orthodox parties. The ultra orthodox parties are very um uh, not only powerful but they have many seats in in the parliament uh they have uh, i think today it's 16 seats uh, out of 120 yes mm -hmm. so the percentage of the ultra orthodox parties is is not minimal uh, and, and and the petition was against the bylaw of this um uh, of this uh, party, 
the Agudat Israel, uh, which in the bylaws specifically said that only men can be members of the party. The uh, outcome of this bylaw is that there can't be any uh, woman uh, in the political party in the Knesset. Uh, and there aren't any laws in Israel that uh, uh, oblige parties to have uh, uh, to, to have a quota or, you know, there are many different uh, ways uh, in, in many different uh, countries that have uh, that adopted tools in order to advance women's representation in uh, parliament. Yeah, uh, when I learned that, did you hear me scream over in Israel? <laughs> I, could, <laughs> I could, you know, I mean, our reality here is, I mean, it's so outrageous. I mean, of course, you feel the same way, but our reality here, um, you know, first of all, Jews are a minority anyway here, and so diluted our you know, we have a huge impact given our numbers, but, you know, compared to U.S., you know, we're a small number. But there, uh, when you're dealing, uh, there's 20% Arab mm -hmm. population, but 80% are Jewish. And to hear that, oh, my God, like I said, you could have heard me scream <laughs> in Israel. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. That is, it's too outrageous. But go ahead. So um, the, at first, um, the uh, it seemed as if as if we will not uh, have a success with this uh, petition. But the in in legal tense, we kind of won. I would say mm -hmm. because the after the petition, the uh, the. Um, the party changed its bylaws. And now, uh, according to the bylaws of the biggest two uh, ultra-Orthodox parties, uh, it doesn't say anymore that only men can be uh, members. However, they told the court that it will not have any significance in reality. And uh, that was um, January, or no, uh, the, the, the verdict uh, was given uh, on January 19. Uh, and since then, it's been, we had uh, four, uh, election, uh, four elections, and we still don't have any woman in the ultra-Orthodox parties. And, uh, um, and this affects all women in Israel, because, for example, in this specific government and in this specific coalition, these uh, uh, parties are not part of, but usually in the 72 years, uh, 74 years of existence of the state of Israel, um, the ultra-Orthodox parties were part of most of the coalitions and most of the governments. And this is, and when you don't have enough women uh, around the table of decision-making, so it affects all women, not only ultra-Orthodox, it also affects women uh, uh, from, from other uh, communities uh, across Israel. And that is why, by the way, we uh, represented 10 uh, women's organizations that joined the petition. The petition was submitted uh, by a private secular lawyer called Tamar Ben Porat. And she asked us to join uh, uh, us as a civil society organization. And we uh, joined uh, 10 uh, women's organizations one of them was a Palestinian citizen of Israel uh, organization because this was the this was our say. Uh, it's not a matter of the ultra orthodox women. It's a matter of the whole society of the whole Israeli society. Um, of course. So yeah, so uh, there we we had a significant step forward with this change of the bylaws, but still there isn't a change in reality. We're still hopeful that it will, and, and there is also, there are more and more women uh, in the ultra-Orthodox community that dare to um, say out loud, loud that they want to be part of um, the political world of decision-making uh, uh, positions, not only in the Knesset, also in municipalities. Mm. The what are the unique cultural issues that you find on the Palestinian side uh, that impact uh, your yeah 
There are many um, issues, and I think that the, um, I think you can summarize it with the fact that they are part of a minority group and not just a minority group, it's a part of a minority, national minority group. Uh, and this uh, puts them in a very difficult um, uh, circumstances in which uh, inequality is part of their daily life, uh, in which, um, for example, um, when now when uh, uh, the tension ro uh, was again uh, uh, high, yeah, uh, the violence. For, for women, for Palestinian women, uh, citizens of Israel, uh, I'm talking about, um, mm -hmm. when they were walking in the streets of, um, of, uh, of, of cities and towns that are, uh, are uh, I mean, not Arab uh, cities, uh, they are afraid to speak their own language. Uh, women that were, um, uh, that were, um, had, um, um, uh, the the were, headscarf? Yes, the headscarf. Yes, women that wear headscarf were exposed to uh, uh, to curses and to violent uh, remarks, and they were very afraid to go outside dur during this uh, these weeks. Uh, and it also affects their uh, everyday life. It affects their employment. Because uh, although there is uh, quite a large percent, I don't have the numbers with me, but there, there is quite a large percent of women, Palestinian citizens of Israel, that go to the uh, universities, uh, women mm -hmm. that are scholars. And, uh, but, mm -hmm. but when they go out to find work, it is very difficult for them to find work and to find suitable, to find suitable work. Uh, most of them, uh, most of the uh, uh, Arab uh, villages and towns are in the periphery and uh, there isn't even uh, suitable uh, public trans transportation for many of these villages. So for these women, they need to uh, find a way to go to work, for example, in Tel Aviv. If they want to go to Tel Aviv, the, it is uh, very, very complicated. One of our um, offices of Itach Ma'aki is in Beersheba, I mentioned that, and mm -hmm. there we established uh, 15 years ago uh, um, the Center for uh, Bedouin Women's Rights. Uh, and there, um, uh, attorney Hanan Asana and uh, Frida, who's a Jewish, uh, the Jewish coordinator of this office, they uh, receive dozens of, uh, of um, uh, calls from Bedouin women, uh, mm -hmm. Bedouin women in the Negev who uh, uh, are exposed to many uh, problems uh, in their day-to-day -day life. Some of them live in uh, unacknowledged uh, villages which don't have a uh, water supply and which doesn't have an uh, uh, education system. The children have to go uh, walking uh, in the desert uh, for miles and miles uh, to the to, uh, school. And that also has major effects on women. Uh, of course, uh, so I, it is but not cool for me to, to, to summarize all of the Yeah, problems. no, there's so many, I, I see that there's so many, and there are other uh, folks also that I wanted to get to, but I also wanted to get to your different programs, but I did want to say, even um, not in general Israeli society or with the government and and infrastructure, but even within their own communities, um, that uh, Arab women within Arab society have their own battles as well in terms of their culture. So, yes, can you course. explain a little bit about that? Because I mean, they're they're at home; they get this and and 
public society, they have other issues, but what what is what are the I mean things that per, per obviously you and I would <laughs> think aren't quite right, but what, what what do they face at home as being a woman versus a man? Mm -hmm. I think that it's it also has to do with the it's it's part of the same uh, answer that I gave you before. Mm. I, I, maybe I'll, I'll answer with you with two examples. Okay. One of them is that in these kind of tense days, when when the tension yes. rises, yes. Uh, and the the one of the effects uh, also in war times, also in uh, crisis times, in not only from security uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. um, when the when the tension rises the tension also rises at home and right. the violence the the violence the domestic violence is also something that uh, that happens throughout society as we all know it's not something that is right. only a cultural thing it's it's right. in the whole society but right. when you are part of a minority that is deprived of many of the rights and that has uh, that has high difficulties in uh, in 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 earning a living and mm -hmm. when the men also the men are getting fired or also being abused in the public sphere many times it also has an effect in inside the home uh, and uh, in Israel, all around Israel, and and unfortunately, this is not only an Israeli problem, uh, but uh, uh, this this uh, uh, also has uh, an influence, and a unique or a graver influence on women from Palestinian citizens, uh, from Palestinian uh, villages and and uh, society. And I will also give you another um, example. I was talking before about the the, <clears throat> the private weapons and and the the issues of the weapon distribution in the public sphere. Uh, <clears throat> we saw recently the um, politicians in Israel calling on on people to carry their weapons. Right now, the the when they are saying that Jewish, Jewish politicians, but when they are saying that. They're thinking about uh, soldiers or ex-soldiers that have a gun uh, and that can use this in the public sphere. So first of all, as I said before, this, these guns also do not, uh, cannot really only jeopardize us. But uh, these guns, even if they are in license and they are owned by uh, people that were trained, many of them are being stolen and being and and you have uh, major problems of guns also stolen from the army and from the on from private uh, private uh, owners and also from uh, security guards that have to take their guns home after the work and these guns are being stolen uh, and this is one of the major problems of um, of uh, Palestinian cities and and uh, villages in Israel today, and uh, the light, <clears throat> and we are very much worried about uh, one of the uh, latest uh, government's uh, uh, decision. Uh, the defense minister, the the interior defense minister, decided that uh, there will be more people, uh, ex uh, people that were uh, that uh, were in police force will also be uh, able to carry guns uh, uh, as civilians. And this, is, this means more guns in, uh, in Arab villages, more guns in the streets. Uh, I don't know if you heard a, a month ago, um, a woman, uh, not a woman, a girl, a 16 year old girl, year old girl uh, in a Palestinian village in Israel uh, studied to her exams and uh, and um, and outside there were gangs fighting with the guns, and one of the bullets just went through the window, and mm -hmm. she died. She, yes. she died. Yeah. And this is the same weapon. I mean, not of course. This weapon was a stolen weapon. It's not a light uh, weapon 
with a license. Uh, but this is this this is the outcome of having more guns uh, yeah. in the streets. It's like uh, they talked about the Wild West, except it's 2022. It's mm. yes. it's horrible. Anyway, we could talk uh, uh, um, so much about all of these different areas, but I really want to get to your various wonderful programs. So. Uh, let's do that. First, we'll talk about the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 that you're, there's a picture of you here. Okay. Can you talk about? Yes. So I, wa I wanted to elaborate a little bit because your, uh, your uh, program is called Peace yes. with Penny. Uh, so I think that 1325 uh, uh, I, I presume that this will interest you uh, more than anything, maybe. Uh, so I will talk a little bit well, about... Well, so far it all interests me, so... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 1325, uh, the number of the Security Council resolution, it was a historic res resolution. UN Security Council resolution was, uh, uh, pa was passed in the Security Council uh, 21 years ago. It was an, an historic uh, resolution. It was the first resolution of the Security Council that referred to women at all. There weren't any, uh, any references to women in uh, Security Council resolutions before. It is very important to remind us all that the Security Council of the UN, uh, the goals of the Security Council is to prevent conflict, our, uh, bloody conflict, and to bring to an end bloody conflict. So this, this resolution was historic in several manners. One is that it acknowledged for the first time that women are uh, being affected and being severely affected by violent conflicts, because usually when you, if you will Google uh, pictures of war, you will usually see tanks male soldiers, and you will seldomly see women, sometimes as refugees, yes, but you, you cannot see many of the women, uh, of the implications on women that are much more than, of course, refugee is, is one of the worst, but it's not only that. Um, the, the, the resolution uh, was adopted after the, the war's uh, in the 90s, uh, in Rwanda and in Yugoslavia, where the world was, uh, uh, because it was filmed, it was filmed and pictured, uh, the world could not avoid seeing that uh, the, uh, the, the weapon uh, against, uh, the, one of the weapons that was used uh, in these wars, wars was uh, uh, rape. Uh, so this was one of the uh, effects that led to the resolution. And on the other hand, of the same, it's the same equation, very non-even equation. Women are, al are almost absent, almost totally absent from decision-making positions on these issues of peace and security. So the resolution demanded from the uh, all member states to promote um, representation of, of women in, uh, in uh, decision-making bodies on peace and security issues and to implement gender perspective, to acknowledge the, um, the effects of bloody conflicts on women uh, and to implement gender perspective in this discourse, discourse of peace and security as a tool to prevent conflicts and to bring an end to conflicts. I, re I remind you, I remind us all that this is the goal of the Security Council. This Security Council resolution was an outcome of uh, long uh, work efforts of, uh, of women's organizations from all around the world. Uh, and this was their uh, success. And after, after the resolution, uh, one of the one of the actions that was taken by many uh, women's organizations around the world was to translate it to uh, to dozens of languages in order because they saw this 
UN Security Council resolution, as I see it, as a tool, as a tool for women in conflict areas, a tool to, to let them, to, to, to give them, I would say, some kind of legitimacy to speak out loud in these issues where when usually uh, women are not supposed to, uh, or not, not, it's not supposed, but uh, usually women uh, are considered to be not to, 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 to have a say on these issues. And this resolution say, yes, you have a say. And not only if you will be in the army, not at all. As a civilian, we want to hear your voice as a civilian, because this is, and this is what we in Itach Ma'aki, we see this, the advantage and the call of 1325, saying that it's not that we want only to count heads of women around the table. We want to bring the gender perspective to the table. So uh, 1325 in Israel was actually adopted uh, part of it was adopted uh, in a legal, in a law uh, in 2005, and the government since 2005 is obliged by law to make sure that in every public uh, committee there will be um, equal representation, not equal, appropriate, this is the legal uh, um, phrasing, appropriate uh, uh, um, women's <coughs> representation from diverse groups of society, uh, also in issues of peace and security. Now, uh, <clears throat> the fact that it mentioned women from diverse groups in society was, uh, an, uh, was, was a real uh, historic uh, step forward for, for feminists <laughs> in Israel, because this was to acknowledge that women in Israel, it's not a woman that can represent everyone. Uh, and uh, and uh, when when you are talking about, uh, um, for example, uh, Bedouin uh, uh, villages in Israel, you cannot have only a Jewish woman on this committee. You have to have a Bedouin woman, a woman on this committee, and also the Bedouin men cannot represent Bedouin women. So, <clears throat> so this was a major step forward. But unfortunately, um, this uh, bill, this uh, law, uh, wasn't uh, implemented in the beginning. Uh, and, um, right. and in two th 2007, we, we started to uh, monitor, to do legal monitoring of uh, this uh, uh, law. We started uh, submitting petition after petition uh, against uh, um, governmental committees that did not implement this law and didn't have representation of women. And uh, in one of the uh, one of our achievements was in the committee was in the petition that we submitted to the High Court against um, the Tirkel uh, Committee. I don't know if you remember. You remember the Flutila event. Uh, the flotilla from Turkey that came to uh, protest against the, um, um, the uh, to, to protest uh, in front of Gaza uh, Gaza coast, mm. and after this uh, uh, events, uh, there was a, a governmental committee uh, led by a, a former uh, a high court judge uh, Tirkel. Uh, and we and and we submitted a petition against it because there weren't any women in this committee, and this was the first time when the High Court said to the government, "Stop the deliberation. You cannot move forward." It was 2011. You cannot move forward in these in 2011 without implementing your own law. Uh, so, uh, um, okay. You, uh, the, we had a picture then, uh, we had a caricature uh, <laughs> in one of the main uh, Israeli newspaper, Haaretz newspaper, that uh, showed Tirkel, the, the judge Tirkel, looking uh, in the computer, looking in J-date, looking for a woman for his, uh, uh, for his uh, committee. So mm -hmm. when we got to the, to the main um, to the main uh, newspapers and to this decision, we realized that we have made uh, a major progress. 
uh, in this realm. But we realize that this, that this is not enough and that we need a national action plan. Uh, by this time, 2011, the United States had a national action plan that uh, Hillary Clinton was uh, Secretary of State at that time. Uh, and already almost 50 uh, countries by then had a national action plan to implement the principles of 1325 in their uh, work of the government. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, uh, we didn't, uh, Israel did it. And the picture that you showed was uh, a picture uh, that uh, was taken only this year when mm -hmm. the government eventually founded uh, um, a, a, a committee uh, to, a, to, to, to write a national action, action plan. Uh, yes. And this was an historic moment, uh, but uh, it is very, uh, we as civil society, we still see that the, we still find the progress very, very slow. And we called on the government to use this opportunity to, to give more room for women and for women of a gender perspective in this particular sphere. The, gen, the, the peace and security sphere, because this is essential in order to, to create a difference. Um, so this was, I, I, I made a, a very huge leap from 2011 to, to a few months ago, uh, <laughs> but during these years... Unfortunately, uh, the, the government didn't make that huge leap. <laughs> Uh, yes, but during these these years, um, uh, yeah, the there was the um, women wage peace movement was established, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there were also many changes throughout these years uh, in the civil society um, arena. Uh, and uh, just these days, we I was talking about this action uh, action group of mm -hmm. uh, women, uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel and Jewish women organization that are now working together. And we call together on the government to seize this opportunity, to see 1325 as a tool that will help, uh, uh, help bring uh, a just resolution. Uh, last year, after the May uh, hostilities, uh, we also had an initiative together with Palestinian women from, uh, from the West Bank. We, we issued a letter, a joint letter to leaders, local leaders and international leaders. We called on them to, uh, to advance a long-term uh, uh, negotiation. We called for a negotiation for a long-term solution that will be based on the 1325 uh, principles and to end the occupation and to bring a just solution uh, to uh, to our area, and yeah. that was signed by by two hundred uh, women's organizations and and uh, activists from within Israel and the West Bank. So, are you working on another one for this May? Unfortunately, it sounds like uh, we've got the beginnings of. You know, it, th this is a horrible anniversary, but uh, the, the repetition is really sad that the the violence is, you know, kicked up. Yes. And particularly, you know, I, I look at it during the holy times when they're all three religions mm -hmm. have their holy times. And once again, uh, people are not learning. You know, mm. yes. The vi violence does no good. Uh, of course, this is. Uh, we we hope that we will not have to to come to that it will not deteriorate. But this is exactly what we fear from, and this is also what I talked about before about this letter that we issued mm -hmm. uh, with forty five organizations from of women from different backgrounds and different political sure. backgrounds mm -hmm. that usually do not find a common right. uh, a common uh, goal and a common uh, language but in this this is exactly what we asked the government to stop the uh, escalation uh, 
And in order right. to do that, you need to, to take actions, to take responsibility. Uh, and this in our, pers- uh, in, our um, uh, in our notion, this is gender perspective, to mm-hmm. see a fuller uh, perspective of the, of, the, of the same picture. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. But let's get on to another of your incredible work. And that's the 2030 Agenda from the United Nations for Sustainable Development Goals. I've, I've noted that a number of organizations that I've interviewed and, and that are out there do use uh, the environment and sustainability mm. to be able to work together. So can you talk about that? Uh, mm-hmm. What do you mean uh, when you're talking about the organization that you, that, that deal with peace? Uh, yes, through, uh, yes, climate? yes, mm. yes. They work on peace, uh, but uh, they uh, have Israelis and uh, um Palestinians mm-hmm. or uh, yeah. Israeli Arabs or Israeli Palestinians, however they want. I know that there's different people believe differently what they want to be called, but the bottom line is they take this particular issue and they manage to be able to work together mm-hmm. uh, and which ultimately is working on peace. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so First of all, the sustainable development goals, uh, as I said before, it's the 17 goals uh, that uh, the, the, the all member states in a very long and, and holistic uh, process decided on. Each one of these goals that you can see here uh, mm-hmm. has, has specific uh, targets and specific indicators. Uh, and if, if we will read these goals out loud, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes it will sound like uh, some, once uh, someone told me in a lecture that it sounds like a, um, uh, like, like a speech of a, a, in a beauty contest. It's a no poverty, mm-hmm. zero hunger, a quality education. Uh, so it is, it, does, it might sound like that. And it has this... Uh, um, uh, this uh, a little bit of a, a rosy, too rosy uh, uh, um, look. But when you go inside the targets, and when you think about the fact that all member states agreed on these goals, and that they see the the, the interlinks between these goals, this is the 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 most important uh, um, uh, advantage of this uh, agenda because if you go to, throughout the the targets of each one of these goals you can see that it combines throughout the goals so when when we are uh, advancing gender equality it's not only in target uh, so, sorry it's not only it doesn't only appear in in goal 5 it also appears in goal Six and in goal uh, and in goal uh, ten, that's for sure. But also in goal eleven. So it has it's combined throughout uh, the the goals, and it shows how it's uh, everything is interlinked. And you cannot only work on environmental issues. It has to do with peace. Uh, a few years ago, when we just started. Uh, this project in Israel, in the civil society in Israel, we had um, we had a conference, uh, and we submitted the ambassadors uh, in Israel. You know, if I could, sorry, if I could just interrupt, sure. Netta, just a, um, because we we're talking around it, and uh, I think it's important because I don't know that people can necessarily see the little writing and stuff. Just if you could quickly just say what the goals are, the 17 goals are, so people get an idea. And Mm -hmm. what I would say to the comment about it, you know, being so uh, positive, what, you're not going to shoot for a a negative goal. 
<laughs> I, mean, I mean, really. So can you just quickly run through this 17 so people who are very unfamiliar get an idea of what you're talking yes, about? Of course. The, the 17 goals that we see here are, um, uh, are goals that are from different aspects. One of, some of them are welfare, uh, like no poverty, zero hunger. Uh, number three is good health and well-being. Number four, goal four is quality education. And number five is gender equality. And then you have the more climate change uh, uh, oriented goals, clean water and sanitation, uh, affordable uh, and clean energy. And it began the combination, the economic uh, uh, goals, decent work and economic growth, uh, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and, uh, and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate change, which is which we will expect to see that there, mm -hmm. and life below water, life on land, and number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And number 17, it's the partnership, partnership for, for goals. This is the general goal, and the, this goal is talking about the partnership between the different sectors, the business sector, the government sec sector, and the civil society uh, sector. And it also has a very important uh, um, uh, fact. Uh, 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 one of the targets is to, to bring, to put an emphasis on the issue of data. data. The two <clears throat> goal 17, demands from uh, the uh, UN states to have uh, to collect uh, responsible data on all of these goals uh, according to the indicators of each goal uh, that you can find uh, uh, in the UN uh, uh, website and this, this is very important because this means that in order to make a change you need to have the knowledge you have to, you need to have the data and this is one of our uh, requests <clears throat> demands from the israeli government to make sure that you will have the the, the data what do uh, climate employment and gender equality have in common sorry again what do uh, climate employment mm -hmm. and gender equality have in common mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, in, in, in the conference that we held a few months ago, we had a fascinating uh, lecture that was also um, referring to the Hurricane Katrina, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, one of the implications of Hurricane Katrina was, of course, the, the employment, I think, is more obvious, but it also had a grave effect on women's uh, security. Because uh, in times of crisis and in times of ecological crisis, uh, the effects are, uh, the, the, ten, the tension in the houses arise. And when there is a background of domestic violence or tension, the women are more, women and children are much more exposed to violence. And the rise, uh, this, these numbers and the, 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 the rise of the um, percentage of women that are exposed to violence, to domestic violence, is something that you can see also uh, in areas when there is a heat wave uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and other uh, uh, um, ecological uh, extreme uh, events. Uh, so when we, we were talking about security and when we are talking about Israel, we usually think about, the, 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 of course, the, uh, the military security, but security is, much, is, is a much broader um, uh, definition. Mm. And um, what's the connection between poverty, education and peace? Well, I mean, uh, for me, to me, it sounds uh, it sounds almost obvious, but um, 
I think that when you we're talking here, we're talking about about uh, about education that is uh, that is equal and quality education. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to, I think that in Israel and in Palestine, you can see how uh, the education systems do not uh, advance the values of peace. Do not advance the 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 values of conflict resolution. Um, my kids, uh, I have three boys, uh, quite mm. little, and uh, mm. two of them go to uh, elementary school. This week they will uh, mark the Holocaust Day, but next right. week they will mark the uh, Remembrance Day for the um, for for the. Um, uh, for, for the soldiers, for the Israeli soldiers that died throughout the, the wars in Israel. Unfortunately, we do not have a, a, a day that will commemorate the peace with Egypt, for example, or the peace with Jordan, which are very important days. And mm -hmm. this is something that, that I think can... Uh, uh, show in the most... Uh, um, uh, vivid uh, way how uh, when there isn't when the, the, the education system and it's also very clear in the media the, in the media you can hardly see Arabs in the media um, of course in the news uh, only uh, Arabs that uh, that appear in the items but they do they are there are almost no Arab correspondents of course not uh, not in any ratio to their uh, percentage uh, in the society, uh, and when you don't, when you hardly hear Arabic, uh, it's 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 considered to be the enemy's uh, language. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you also also ask me about the re the connection to poverty. Mm -hmm. So when you have when you can barely, um, uh, you know, we can you barely have enough money uh, to buy the books or to to, uh, uh, to 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 pay for the school and and other necessities, um, you will sell the, your your very often uh, you will have um, uh, you you will of course. It will be very difficult to uh, have any hope and any optimistic uh, visions. Uh, and sometimes um, something that is quite common in the Israeli society, in the Israeli media, is to say that we, we don't have enough money to, uh, to bring uh, to, to poor uh, societies and to poor or, and to people who live with poverty in poverty. Because because we need to put all of this money in security goals and the security budget is so big. Uh, so uh, we don't have enough money for a better education, for a better life for people who live in poverty. But one kind of impacts the other, obviously. Of course. Mm. Well, Unfortunately, time is what it is. It was wonderful and very informative. I really appreciate uh, your time today. Let me ask you just the one last question. As uh, Itach Maki moves forward, what are the areas that you hope to see the most growth in over the next years? Okay, so I, I think my personal uh, goal is uh, my current, the project that we just started, uh, which is a very ambitious project. And the goal is to lay the foundation for a, a gender equality committee that will be, that will escort every deliberation on peace and security issues. If it's formal or informal deliberations that exist, future negotiation, which we now can only dream about. But in order to get to that point, we need to bring more women from diverse groups to these decision-making bodies and positions. And we, we are doing that now uh, also with training 
for women that are potential candidates to, to be part of these kind of deliberations, formal or informal, as I said, and also to uh, implement this notion uh, of this necessity of such a committee within uh, the government and the Knesset. And this, we got the inspiration for that from the, uh, from the peace uh, process in Colombia. Uh, where after very bloody uh, conflict with uh, mm. a quarter million uh, people uh, dead uh, in this conflict, uh, a gender equality uh, committee helped not only finalize and not only achieving a peace agreement, but also had a gender perspective uh, article in each one of the chapters and is a very, and is promoting not only the peace, but also gender equality. Mm. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Netta. What your Thank organization you. is doing is so important for the health of Israeli society. Next week, coincidentally, we'll be speaking about gender equality with another peace organization involved with women's rights, I believe you've worked together, called SHIN, the Israeli Movement for Equal Representation of Women. Mm -hmm. Theirs isn't so much from a legal perspective, but from a people-to-people -people perspective, and they concentrate on Israel proper, not in the Palestinian territories at all. Their founder, Esther Herzog, put what they're trying to achieve this way, they try to promote women to political leadership positions. They support women and promote awareness for the necessity of basic needs, working in cooperation between Jewish and Arab women and young girls in underprivileged segments of the population. And thirdly, they try to bring about social change regarding gender issues, whether helping single mothers who are being threatened and taking away their children or preventing sex trafficking. As you can see, many people are working very hard to improve the lives of Jewish, Arab, and Palestinian people in the Middle East, promote cooperation, and Peace with Penny strives to get the word out that there is hope for peace, whether being between genders or peoples. Next week, we'd love for you to join us again. We hope that the situation will calm down in Israel and that there will be better news for the people of Ukraine and Russia. For now, we'll leave you as we pray that everyone will someday live in peace, shalom, and salam. Mm -hmm.